Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now in previous videos, I've shown you how to use the official Raspberry Pi camera with the Raspberry Pi, how to set it all up and how to capture video, how to capture still images. And then another video I showed you how to use it from Python itself, how you can even apply some filters all programmatically from within inside Python. But now that you can capture video, now that you can capture stills, now that you can even manipulate it a little bit, what's the next step? Well, the next step will be to be able to take those images and do some detection about what you see in the actual images, computer vision. So we're talking about face detection, we're talking about object detection, we're even talking about pose estimation. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so if we're talking about face detection, object detection, pose estimation, we are entering into the realm of machine learning. So what we're gonna be looking at today is how to use two different frameworks, two different libraries that allow you to use the power of machine learning to actually detect things and recognize things in the video footage that's coming from your Raspberry Pi camera. So specifically, we're gonna be looking at TensorFlow Lite and we're gonna be looking at OpenCV. Now the first, of course, is the lighter version of TensorFlow, which is the very, very popular machine learning uh, kind of framework and it is designed specifically for running at more low-end machines so in embedded devices Raspberry Pi being a classic example uh, smartphones that kind of thing the other one is uh, OpenCV open computer vision an open source library with over two and a half thousand algorithms for detecting things inside of pictures now you get access to TensorFlow Lite and to uh, OpenCV just with the standard Raspberry Pi uh, install however one slight problem is that you don't always get the latest or the best versions of the libraries that you need. Now there is a company called Q Engineering who provide machine learning technology to their clients, I guess. Uh, I'm not sponsored by or associated with that company anyway whatsoever. I've just found their stuff. I'm about to tell you about very useful. Now they've got on their GitHub repository loads and loads of examples for doing machine learning and also a Raspberry Pi image that's got all the latest and greatest versions, particularly of OpenCV, pre-installed. And they've actually built it from the latest sources and then put it onto the uh, SD card. And so the really the easiest way to get into this with the camera is to use their image. There'll be links in the description below Basically, you get the image, you flash it onto an SD card exactly like you would with a normal image for Raspberry Pi. So use the Raspberry Pi imager, select a third party image, go in there, select the drive and just do it all. And then it boots up just as normal as a, a Raspberry Pi OS, but you've got all those latest machine learning libraries on there. Uh, the password I think is Pi and then 3.14 is the password for, for their image. And if you do that, you get access to all these things and a load of examples are also included on the SD card image, which we'll talk more about in a minute. So let's start with TensorFlow Lite. This is an example from the official documentation. Now, when using TensorFlow Lite, what you're actually doing is you're loading up a neural network model, and then you're using that model as a tool for it to process the images that you're giving it so that you can get object recognition or whatever that you want to do. Now, the great thing about this is, is that all the hard work, all the training of that model, someone else has done. And there are loads and loads of models available. And we'll talk more about this towards the end of the video. But the thing is, you can use it just like you would use any other tool. You want a tool that parses, you know, XML or, or JSON. Well, they, you just use a library to do that already. And that's what we're doing here with machine learning. So this first example for TensorFlow Lite, it's doing object detection. So what I've done, I've set up my uh, Raspberry Pi with the camera. I've pointed it at a light box and I've put in the light box a keyboard. And as you can see, the keyboard is being recognized by the uh, TensorFlow Lite library using that uh, neural network model that was already been pre-trained and we're just using it to infer, for inference to infer what's in the picture. And as you can see, if I put in a mug now, a coffee mug, uh, it recognizes the coffee mug and it also recognizes my arm as being part of a person. And this is all happening in real time. These were, I recorded this live and I literally stuck my arm in there and you could see it. So this is a, shows you the power of using something like TensorFlow Lite and the, and the pre-trained models that already exist. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are some examples on the SD card from Q Engineering, and these are not written in Python, these are written in C++, which can give you that extra bit of uh, speed boost. And also, if you don't know Python, but you do know C++, you notice there are two ways, always, of accessing the system. You don't have to know just one language. So in this first example, we're going to be putting, again, object detection through an actual video clip. This is a trailer for a 007 movie. And as we can see, as we run through it here, it's very quickly trying to pick out the different objects that exist inside of the picture. Now notice here the frame rate. It's happening at 17 frames a second. So if this was something you were doing, let's say for a doorbell camera, and you wanted to see if someone had come to the door, and then when there's a person been recognized, you know, some kind of notification given to you, then 17 frames a second is absolutely fine. If you're trying to do something, you know, at speed, kind of frame rate or multiple cameras, then this is not going to be fast enough. And what's interesting, my next video that I plan to do is about do, does using a GPU speed up the inference for things like object detection? And we're going to be using a Jetson Nano, which of course has got the 128 core Maxwell GPU in it, and we're going to see whether that speeds it up. But that's for the next video. But here we are processing in, in, in real time enough for a live situation, certainly, this uh, video, and it's doing all the object detection. Another example there on that SD card is with pose estimation. So the idea of pose estimation is, you know, as you're standing in different positions, the uh, the computer can have a look at it and say, oh, that person is standing like this. Great, of course, for games. You know, they've, we've got uh, an old Kinect here on the Xbox uh, Xbox 360, I think it was, and you know, you can you can bowl and you can play tennis and all that kind of stuff. Very important, you can you know, for making signs and for the computer to be able to recognise those positions. Of course, then you can interact with the computer. And so here we can see in this demo here somebody showing all their poses as they are moving around. Now, as you notice, this last one and the one before that with the 007 trailer, instead of using the camera, you can, you can already use another video file that you've got. But it's exactly the same thing. Rather than opening the camera, you open the video file. And the last example we've got here is with face detection. Face detection, maybe when you've got one face in the crap in a picture is okay, but when you've got multiple faces, this really is quite an interesting experiment for the machine learning model to understand and recognize all those faces. And as you can see here, it's doing a pretty good job even with a larger crowd. Okay, so what's the point of all this? What I'm trying to show you is that today we live in a time when we've got tools, libraries uh, supported by neural network models that have been pre-trained that allow us to do some quite amazing things with video feeds and with photos, object recognition, face detection, pose estimation, and so much more. Of course, we've also got you know natural language processing, we've got speech recognition, all these kind of things are in the same uh, domain. And what I want to encourage you is that you don't need to understand the real minute details of how that model was trained and how it got to be what it is. What you need to know is that you can use something like TensorFlow Lite, like you can use something like OpenCV, take the models, take the algorithms that already exist, and then just apply them just like you would any other tool uh, in your software development kind of, you know, uh, library, how you would apply that to your own application. So if you wanted to write something that can recognize a face, as I said, a doorbell, for example, with a video thing on it, then you don't have to worry about how you train up a model to get that. You just download the model that already knows how to do uh, face detection, and then you go on to write the bit that you're interested in, which is the application and the, the doorbell and the notification and what you're going to do, and is it going to open up a, a box for someone to put in a parcel, or you know whatever it is that you're trying to think about doing. You don't need to worry about that part. So I want to encourage you to look at TensorFlow Lite, look at OpenCV, look at the examples from TensorFlow Lite, look at the examples from companies like uh, Q Engineering and get to grips with what you can do with your Raspberry Pi and a camera and then process that video and maybe you could, there are all kinds of applications that you could get really interested in. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.